Uh, take me through just your impressions of the way the Buckeyes played against the Clemson Tigers and what impressed you. Yeah, that's the best game they've played all season in every aspect. Defensively, Justin Fields in the passing game, the running game, we've seen that grow over the last couple of games here. The receivers, I mean, Ryan Day's play calling, everything clicked at a time when they probably needed it to click. Now, some of that was probably emotional driven, driven given how last season's game ended. But yeah, everything came together. And I think this is the Ohio State team that coming into the season before, you know, things got canceled and we had that circus of events. We thought we would see from Ohio State all year. That, that was one of the two best teams in college football. And that's what we saw from Justin early on in the season and everything's clicking at this. That was, that's impressive. Now let's go do it again on Monday. <laughs> you, you, mentioned, you mentioned Justin Fields. You and I had talked and you thought he had it in him to play pretty well. Did you see him coming out and doing what he did against the, the Clemson Tigers, though? I mean, he struggled in that Big Ten championship game. And, you know, to come back from that hit and play the way he did, um, you can't say enough about the heart uh, that he showed. Yeah, I guarantee you, you hit me in my ribs like that. I'm not playing football <laughs> for the rest of the day. I'm yeah. just, that's not happening. The 22 or 28, yes, because he's been that efficient for the bulk of his career outside of the Indiana game and whatever that Big Ten championship was. He's been pretty efficient. So that part, yes, the 385 passing yards and six touchdowns, I don't know if anybody can ever predict the guy's going to be that good and receivers are going to be that open and he's going to have deep shot after deep shot. That, that no, I, I can't sit here and promise you and tell you <laughs> I thought he would be all that. But I did think that he and Trevor Lawrence would maybe get into a little bit of a duel there and maybe it'd turn into a shootout and that would be the only way Ohio State would win. And that's what he pulled off. And the only bad thing he did all day was he overthrew a Chris Olave on one pass. That should have been a touchdown. Oh, well, he just hit him later for a 56-yard touchdown pass. And he got a little cocky and tried to throw it in his triple covers at Chris Olave, and it got picked off. But other than that, that has been the Justin Fields we saw in the first three games, and I thought we'd see all season. Uh, the other thing, Trey Sermon showed up again. You you had mentioned you thought he had it in him. Uh, he definitely had it in him, and and – you know, when he is running the football like that and Fields has some time, it's a lot to handle for a defense. Yeah, this offensive line is awesome. Uh, that, they, they do their job, and that's getting the sermon to the second level, and then it's on him to make guys miss, stiff arms some guys off, break some tackles, and, and do what running backs do. And I don't know what has happened over the past month with this kid because Ryan Day will even admit it. We weren't sure, they weren't sure what they were getting. The first three games he didn't look good and then all, all of a sudden he broke a 60 yard run against michigan state and now it seems like every game he breaks a 40 plus yard run and just kind of he turned into ezekiel elliott and that's what we're seeing here is a similarity to what 2014 was where from the big 10 championship game on ezekiel elliott was awesome and that's what we're getting out of trey sermon and him being that great has allowed chris olave and garrett wilson and jameson williams to have 40 yard touchdown passes because that's open the other thing is he's built similar to Ezekiel Elliott, a big guy that can run through tackles, and then, you know, he, he surprises people, I think, with his speed in the open field some. Fast and violent. He, he, uh, no, all running backs aren't equal. Some running backs are more finesse, some are more power. But then there are guys who they look for violence, and he seems to look for violence. He had that face mask penalty on, on Friday in that game, and I had no problem with it because I would rather my running back be trying to do that than try to scamper away from it and go out of, out of bounds. So when you have a running back, J.K. Dobbins was like this a little bit. Zeke, as you brought up, was like that. Violent running backs, that's what Ohio State loves. And those guys, violent running backs, have always been successful at Ohio State, going back to Archie Griffin. So, yeah, I, look, man, if he's just going to do this for the rest of the season, Ohio State has is is got a pretty good chance against Bama. 